Namaste, everyone. I'm proud to say this is actually my 20th New Year's letter. Would you believe it? Been doing this for 20 years, though I haven't been recording them on video for that long. But here is this year's, my 2024 New Year's letter, Choosing Life. Today I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse, therefore choose life. And that's from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Towards the end of the Torah, the five books of Moses, a crucial invitation is given, choose life. What does it really mean to choose life? in a world where death and destruction are all around us. Faced with wars, famines, massacres, mass shootings, flood, fire and drought, plague and pestilence, environmental degradation and species extinction. How can we choose life? And should we even bother? Certainly at times we face existential moments when we're called upon to choose life in a big way. Yet the invitation to choose life is one we can respond to in countless tiny ways every day. When we get up in the morning to assume our daily duties, we choose life. When we cook a healthy meal for our family, we choose life. When we do our Ayurvedic morning routines, or go for a brisk walk, or take time to relax and settle before sleep, we choose life. We choose life when we separate the trash and recycling, when we bike or take the bus instead of driving, when we make a small donation to feed the hungry, when we strive to distinguish wants from needs. These are tiny actions Yet if all of us take these actions, it adds up. The small choices of ordinary people can contribute to peace on earth and hope for the climate and the natural world. Yet between the big existential moments like deciding to have open heart surgery or to donate a kidney, and the tiny choices we make every day, there are moments of greater significance. Times when we are called upon to choose life, not just for ourselves, but for all humanity. Are we going to stand idly by for the massacre of innocence, the starvation and displacement of millions, and the destruction of any semblance of a habitable earth? For some, this might mean getting arrested for blocking a highway or sitting in a senator's office. For others of us, it might be marching through the streets, participating in a candlelight vigil, joining a strike, or walking out of classes. We might choose to write a letter to the papers, sign petitions, participate in a phone bank, or call our congressman. Where do we take our stand? What is it that calls us to choose life in a way that is not partisan or self-interested? Sadananda and I have chosen to take our stand on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law. When we see these infringed, we will raise our voices again and again. We will not rest. All states, including the United States, have a duty to cooperate, to prevent the violation of human rights, and that does include the duty to take effective action in the fight against climate change. 
we will not rest until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yet sometimes our actions seem so small, so ineffective. At these times, we remember the words of Otto in the film Alone in Berlin. Otto and his wife resist the Nazi regime by writing cards with an anti-Hitler message and surreptitiously leaving them in public places. Otto, a mechanic in a factory, explains that you can break a machine by putting a handful of sand in it every day. Sudden under and I use the phrase sand in the machine for all our tiny actions on behalf of human rights. Whether we take to the streets or take to Twitter, we choose life by putting sand in the machine of death and destruction. Dear ones, hard as it may seem, let's keep on choosing life in 2024. I wish you and yours many blessings, peace, prosperity, and comfort in the coming year. Blessings to you. Happy New Year.